Hey guys, welcome to Legal Livewire. Today is crazy. So we got a guy, he got an accident, but he doesn't have a valid license, right? So he was a little bit tipsy, but he blew under the legal, so he was fine there, but he didn't have a license. Regardless, another car hauling ass crashed into him. And the people that crashed into him, that's key there, were killed. The people that were passenger, and then the driver was hurt really bad. Now the prosecutor is saying because this guy didn't have a license that that crash never would have happened. And the guy, only reason why the guy didn't have a license was because he has unpaid tickets and he's taking care of his mom and he works at McDonald's and he can't afford it. I'm a little upset with what the judge did here at the end. Because I thought she was going one way, she sure seemed to project that she was. So let's discuss it on Discord at the end. You can find the link in the description below and enjoy the video. Thanks for watching. didn't have a license. He was unlawfully on the roadway. As a result, we have two people, unfortunately, that are deceased. I think it's clear that the defendant poses a danger uh, to the public. Um, we have blood alcohol content that shows that there was alcohol in his system. We have an individual who failed to abide by the law, not get a license, and drive. And as a result, Your Honor, he does pose a danger to the public. And we are asking for a cash bond in this matter in the amount of $50,000, no surety. Okay. So let me just ask you um, a couple of questions here as I look at the investigator's sure. report. Uh, alcohol was in the system, but he was under the legal limit. Is that correct? It's a 0.07. Okay. So he's under the legal limit. Correct. And the speed limit in the area where he was is what? Uh, I believe it was 35 and he was actually going under because he was just exiting mm -hmm. the parking lot. Okay. So he's under the, he's under the speed limit and it shows he's braking at some point, at some point, but not as he gets most close uh, to the accident. I don't, it, he's 20 no, miles per hour never, with braking, he, he 20, never braking. 20 miles at, at five seconds, 20 miles per hour with oh, braking prior at four seconds, 19 miles per hour with braking. And then you get into the no braking, right? right? As we get closer right. to the right. impact. And then we get the other defendant who's actually strange that they're charged in the same document because he hit him, right? And and well, they hit each other because because allegedly Mr. Salisbury failed to yield. But this other person is going twice the speed limit. That's absolutely correct. With, net, with no braking ever. Well, I guess right right beforehand. Right, so right, he's got the opposite back. issue. He's not breaking beforehand, but right before he does break. Right. Okay. Now, I guess I guess the argument, at least for this defendant, would be, Your Honor, that he was unlawfully on the road, shouldn't have been on the roadway in the first place. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to pause right here for a second. I just want everyone to pay attention to the words that are being said from this point forward. I'm going to stay out of the way with no effects, no text, anything. This case kind of has me hot a little bit let alone shouldn't have had the occupants in his vehicle. Mm -hmm. And as a direct result of that, if he wasn't on the roadway, this wouldn't have happened. And but he decided to make that decision. And um, there is a reason why um, you have a valid license. You have to go through all of the credentials. Uh, defendant did not decide to do so. And then we have this now before the court. Do we know that, that he never had a license? Uh, Your Honor, what I have is that, yeah. Uh, your Honor, based on the case that was um, up in 2020, mm -hmm. the driver's license was never acquired. Well, okay. I mean, I will tell you, I find it very curious that in the same ticket, I will have a ticket for driving while license never acquired and driving while license suspended. So I don't, I don't know how those things get charged. And um, so I, I was just wondering if, if he, if we had any information no, that he had done. I, I mean, I do. They do. They charge that, and it's so weird. It's so strange to me. Denied. Yeah. Yeah. So at some point there was a license. At some point, because if his license got revoked or denied, or if it got revoked. I. That, your honor makes sense. But I don't know. I mean, it just, so like I said, I, it was just a question because of the way these things get charged. They never, it doesn't make sense to me um, honor, how somebody. It was just based on the review search of the 36th district. Okay. In that case that okay. the people ended up seeing that um, the driver's license was never acquired. Okay. All right. I mean, these cases are just always difficult because essentially what someone's doing is violating traffic laws, right? And then there could catastrophic results. Um, and so where do we focus the attention on the actual 
wrongdoing or on the catastrophic results. And it's just difficult. Defense counsel, I'll hear your argument. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I'd advise that Mr. Salisbury judge is 22 years old. I would like the president here to indicate he's a criminal Mr. Salisbury isn't. 
because he's going under the speed limit at the time that he's hit by someone going twice the legal speed limit. Um, I am going to ensure that he's not driving. Um, I know, I, I know your honor is very considerate of these matters and she looks at the entirety of the situation. I think the people would just like to end with this okay. is the idea that um, the licensing issues, at least from what the people see, occurred in 2020. Mm -hmm. And there were multiple KPSs. Actually, the defendant never even bothered to show up for any of these things. Mm -hmm. He didn't show any type of willingness. He didn't show anything in terms of wanting to do this the right way in order to acquire this license. So he, I, I can understand where counsel and your honor is coming from, but the people would stick to their argument that um, that a cash bond just based on the dangerousness of what the defendant did in this matter is. Okay, thank you. All right, I'm going to set bond in the amount of $25,000, 10%. I am setting some amount of cash bond because um, we've got some KPS history here that I'm concerned about that contributed to the license issue, but I'm going to set it at $25,000, 10%. I'm also going to require a GPS tether with full home confinement if he's able to make the bond, because apparently that's the only way to stop him from driving without a license. Right now, it's just to make sure he doesn't leave his own home. Um, this will give rise to a bond redetermination hearing. That'll be set for Tuesday, May the 23rd in front of Judge McConico. After that, May 26th for probable cause conference, June 1st for preliminary examination both of those in front of Judge King. Sure, counsel. Your Honor, you know, and I wasn't going to go into this because I didn't think a lot of it was relevant with some of the traffic matters and licensing, but I think it's important now to shed some light. You know, we live in one of the poor, we're here in one of the poorest cities in the country. My guy's working at McDonald's, living with his mom, taking care of her. Yep. If any one of us gets pulled over, we can set up a day with the magistrate, we get $100, $200, it's over, and we're all set, we get zero points. That doesn't happen with people in Mr. Salisbury's position. You don't have an appointed attorney on a civil infraction traffic ticket. If you're working at McDonald's, supporting your mom, all within the guidelines, you know you got to pay $200, Judge. I see this with just a lot more people than Mr. Salisbury. A lot of this gives people an incentive not to pay the tickets. I mean, it, it's wrong. And I agree with, with the people. And I agree with the court. It's wrong to ignore your traffic tickets and to let it pile up. But I have to reiterate, you know, when we look at this case, this didn't happen because he didn't have a license. This happened because somebody was going 75 and, and waxes him. That's why it happened. It's not because he didn't have a license. not because he didn't pay his traffic tickets. I know I'm repeating some of the same arguments, Judge, but if he paid his traffic tickets or not, the same thing would have happened. It's, he wasn't driving recklessly. I know the court has a job to do with ensuring his him not driving, and I think the court can accomplish that with the full home confinement GPS out of judge. I just ask the court to reduce the bond of personal. Um, I don't want him to have to uh, really stand in the Wayne County Jail on this because when I break it down, what did he do wrong? Not pay his traffic tickets. That's the only thing I think he did wrong was not pay his traffic tickets and not go through the proper procedure. But judge, that's expensive. He works at McDonald's. He's in the guidelines. He just got out of rehab for, for this injury. Living with his mother, caring for his mother. He was with some friends. They were leaving McDonald's. He didn't want this to happen. Nobody wanted this to happen. But he pulls out of this thing, and next thing he knows, he's in the hospital for weeks and weeks. For those reasons, Judge, I'd ask the court to consider an option of personal, but keep the GPS tether, full home confinement, that guarantees to the court and the people that he's not driving. He cannot leave his house. His treatment's done. He's all set. He has no reason to leave. I ask the court to reduce that, to make that instead of 25,000, 10% full confinement, make it $100,000 personal with full confinement. He knows how serious this case is, so it's so serious. But I also have a feeling if there's some culpability here and somebody takes a look at this, when they see no priors besides traffic stuff, they'll probably plead them to moving violation causing death if found guilty. And that's, and that's a stretch. But I just ask the court to consider those arguments. I know that people want to respond, but I think you're on. It's really quick to go. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I have a lot of respect for defense counsel and the way he approaches things, as well as your honor. But what defense counsel just said, sets a very, very, very dangerous precedent that now we're talking about things that if allowed, people would just go about their business and defy what in fact they need to do 
to lawfully, in this matter, get on the roadway. And I think there are plenty of people that do the right thing just based on the law in order to acquire the means in order to have the privilege to drive. So I think your honor got it right in terms of this. I don't disagree with the fact that there are socioeconomic issues that may play a part, but in this particular matter, this defendant had over three years with multiple notices in an attempt to try to get, acquire and pay for what he needed in order to lawfully be on the roadway. And your honor, I'm gonna leave it with that because I know your honor wants to move on to other cases and things, but I do have to say the argument that was just made, potentially people listening to this may say to themselves, hey, we can get out on a personal bond if we don't do things the right way because of the argument that was just made. I people get out on personal bonds every single day for driving with a suspended license every day. In fact, it's court policy that they get out on a personal bond. But it is exactly what matter, happens. In um, this particular case, I think what defense counsel is saying, hey, listen, people don't have the money to do this. And you know what? It's really unfortunate. But in this particular matter, the result was death. Mm -hmm. So if they're driving without a, a license and they get picked up and there's no other incident that occurs, so be it. Yeah. In this particular incident, it led to two people losing their life. Well, here's where I am. Um, I agree that had he come and taken care of the tickets and had a valid license and been to McDonald's that day, we were likely to have the exact same result because we had another person, the other def named defendant in this case, who was in fact doing very reckless things while he was driving and it is charged that way. Um, And normally, I don't hold it against a person for not coming to court on traffic matters because it's just so widespread. But in this particular incident, it's the traffic matters and the KPSs and those matters, they've all gotten tied up together. And so I am going to leave the bond, as I said it, at 25,000, 10%, 25,000, 10%. Um, if he's able to make that bond, GPS tether with full home confinement. And as I said, somebody will take another look at this on Tuesday, May 23rd. He'll be in front of, uh, he'll be in front of Judge McConnico on Tuesday and uh, where he'd still be anyway waiting for the tether. So, you know, this will allow um, Judge McConnico to take a sec second look at this and see whether or not he agrees that this bond is appropriate. 